All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ryan Luby. I'm the Deputy Director of Communications for the City of Aurora. Thank you for making time today on what is otherwise relatively short notice, I know. Um, you're going to hear from a handful of people today about uh, Chief Acevedo. First, you're going to hear from Mayor Mike Kaufman. He'll make some brief remarks, followed by uh, City Manager Jason Batchelor. And then we have uh, Chief Acevedo here, of course, to answer your questions. I know there are probably lots of them. Uh, I had mentioned in a news release that we were going to hear from Deputy Chief Morris. I got ahead of myself. I apologize. Uh, you'll probably get a chance to hear from her after she is appointed sometime uh, next week. So with that, I will kick it over to the Mayor. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. It's. Uh it's a, it's a sad day for the city of Aurora. However, we are blessed to have had Chief Acevedo here, uh, interim chief. We hoped, <laughs> we hoped that he was going to be the, the chief um, for the time that we had him. Uh, he has uh, uh, set us on a positive trajectory uh, in terms of the leadership in the department, effective strategies in bringing down uh, the crime rate and, and extraordinary progress under the consent decree. And so, uh, you know, I understand it's a, it's a family matters, family issues, uh, and I respect that. Uh, but it is a, a loss to the city, but nonetheless, we are grateful for his time here. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, uh, Jason Batchelor, city manager. Um, I'm assuming, I thought this was just another round. I thought you guys enjoyed the uh, Chief's press conference so much last week where we were just gonna boot it up again, but um, no, this is a different one. Uh, so uh, as the mayor said, uh, we are very sad uh, to see uh, Chief Acevedo go. Uh, he has served this city uh, well and honorably for the last 13 months, um, and, uh, but at a great personal toll. It is obviously a lot to ask him to move from his, uh, from his family, uh, continue to serve. Uh, he's done that uh, with passion, uh, with professionalism, and I want to thank him for that. Uh, he's done a great job, as the mayor said, um, putting the department uh, on a good trajectory um, in terms of crime fighting, in terms of getting the right leadership team in place, and then um, making significant progress on the consent decree. So he's done everything that we've asked him to, um, and it is with, um, you know, uh, our thanks uh, that he goes. And um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to the chief to um, talk to you all and answer questions. Well, Mayor, uh, thank you for being here. And, you know, thank you for always leading from the front. It's, it was interesting this um, MLK Day, we, we went out there and um, I, I, didn't, <laughs> I can't even see in the crowd. But what I love about this community, the extended community, is that. Uh, a lot of times in, after all these years in government and public service, you go to these events and the elected officials show up, they make sure that the camera captures them, and then the first chance they get, they leave. But I was so pleased to see, Mayor, that <laughs> you and the mayor of Denver and uh, everyone that showed up, the majority of it was elected officials and community leaders, no one left. They all braved the cold, the sub-zero temperature, and we saw it like MLK, Martin Luther King, and all the heroes of the civil rights movement that I certainly have as an immigrant and uh, a person of color whose English is a second language. But for Martin Luther King, I wouldn't be standing here uh, talking today. But thank you, Mayor, because you were there at the beginning, <laughs> you were there in the middle. And by the way, we had a lot of fun. There was nobody on the route, but the people that participated had a lot of fun. But it's with a heavy heart that I come here today. It's, um, it's been 13 months. I'll never forget when I got the call about Aurora um, from Jason and, 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 and Mr. Twombly. And I had been in private sector waiting to see, you know, what to do next in terms of public services. That's truly my DNA. And I had said no to other places. But when Aurora called, I think my heart told me go to Aurora. They, they, they're a, a, a department that needs help, needs leadership, but most importantly, their department that's had a history of bravery, a history of excellence, a department that went to a theater and set the stage, the tone, the example of what collective bravery is, and that's what brought me here. Came here not knowing much about Aurora, but I come to find out it's the most diverse city before I came in this state, and diversity is something I love I love the rich fabric of this community, the rich fabric of this country. And I served in the most diverse city in Houston in the country and the most diverse city here in Colorado. 
Uh, I told Jason <laughs> and Mr. Twombly that, you know, my plan was to stay as long as it was uh, effective. Uh, I thought I would be here two to three years, um, but I miss my kid. I miss my family, and um, we have been talking about what, you know, for, 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 several, for quite a few weeks, it's like, hey, we need you to lose the interim title. But I knew where my heart is. Every time I get a, a video of my son wrestling, and I'm not there, I, can't, I just, it wasn't them, it's me. I can't be without my boy, and I can't move him right now. So I got to get home to him because I want to be judged uh, as a father. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and family has to come first. And it's hard to leave um, because this is a special city. I saw the Attorney General Friday, and I, I told him, General, <laughs> um, first of all, he was very happy with the progress we're making. I said, General, uh, the Aurora Police Department, thanks to the fact that when tragedy struck this community and we were faced with the outrage of the community. This city did not run away from it. This city did not run away from responsibility. This department didn't run away from it. We embraced it. Like I said the other day, out of that tragic death of a young man, I remember the judge saying it was quirky, we have placed this department on the right track. Been here for 13 months. I was very intentional. Our mayor's a major in the Marine Corps, served in two different branches. Our, our manager is a West Point graduate, was the epitome of leadership. And we were very intentional in the last 13 months of assessing our leadership. See, because what has brought this credit to this department isn't a result of the collective hearts of the men and women that serve this community. It was a, a failure of leadership. And that leadership failed the officers, failed the city, and failed the community. So for the last 13 months, I spent a lot of time assessing leadership, listening to our officers, having our, citizens, uh, our uh, chief's advisory committee, hearing from the officers, the civilian employees firsthand, what their priorities are, what they want done, what they think their needs are, what we need to do as leaders, and nine months into it, <laughs> we made a lot of leadership changes. I want this community to know that we're very fortunate that we have a mayor and council that when we made all, that all those leadership changes, and let's just face it, change is very difficult. I want to thank them for supporting and trusting the decisions that we made. I want to thank them for allowing me to bring Deputy Chief Morris with me because the one thing I know about change, having been a change agent my entire career, you've got to bring your wing person with you. You've got to bring somebody that you can trust. And traditionally for me has been a lawyer, <laughs> uh, but I, I brought Heather, who's been here for nine months, and, and I want to thank you for that because you need somebody to watch your six, watch your back, but most importantly, has that shared vision, that shared commitment for the organization. We have a great mayor, a great council, a great city manager, a great community, and as I leave, I don't want to be here all day speaking, but I leave a piece of my heart with Aurora. What a great city. It is truly a jewel that I don't think people appreciate. It's a, it's a rich uh, community. It's a community that is growing, and it's a community that represents the future face of Colorado and obviously the rest of the country. So this community, thank you for trusting this police department. These men and women, I would ask you to please support them, celebrate them, because they get much more right than they do wrong. So as much as we want to hold people accountable, we also need to work on lifting them up with as much rigor as we do uh, in terms of accountability. This is the time to leave. It's the holidays. Jason and I talking. We're saying, hey, you, you, we got to make a decision. And to me, the decision has made it much more, much, much easier decision because I know we've got the right people in the right seats in terms of our command staff, our executive team, our elected officials, and our appointed officials. So with that, I will just say thank you, Aurora, to the men and women of the Aurora Police Department. You are phenomenal. 
no matter how stormy the waters have been, the officers that remain, the, the civilian staff that remain, that have stayed the course, you are truly heroes and thank you for accepting uh, the, the best practices that our partners with the um, uh, consent decree monitor, the, uh, the consent monitor, and uh, the Citizens Advisory Committee and all of our community groups have brought. So uh, I got news for the rest of Colorado in terms of policing. You'll have to catch up because we're really setting the standard and we have a lot to be proud of. So again, thank you. Just remember, uh, if you're ever in Texas, there, you really don't need a passport. You can come and visit me. <laughs> Uh, the coffee's always on, the barbecue's always hot, and uh, the hospitality will be there. But thank you. I look forward to visiting. As a matter of fact, I'll be, we have a couple ski trips planned still for this, uh, this uh, winter. And uh, if, if you need me, just give me a holler. Thank you. And thanks, thanks again, Mayor and uh, City Manager. Anybody have any questions? For this? Anything? Yeah. Uh, más que quiero decir de la comunidad en español, para mí, mire, hace como 13 meses llegué aquí cuando estaba fuera del departamento de policía, de, de, este, de, de este oficio que me, 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 yo me he enamorado con el oficio de oficial. Y me llamó este señor, yo no iba, me habían llamado a otras ciudades y dije, dije que no, pero como me llamaron por la aurora y, y estudié lo que había pasado aquí, sabía que tenemos un departamento con muchos héroes con hombres y mujeres que no tienen temor a combatir el crimen, a enfrentar el individuo que quiere matar, que quiere hacerle daño a nuestra comunidad, y dije que sí. En los últimos 13 meses, lo que yo he encontrado es un departamento que está listo para seguir adelante. Y los problemas no son problemas de los oficiales, son un problema de liderazgo. Pero en estos 13 meses tengo un hijo que lo extraño mucho. Y, 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 y tengo que ir a usar mi corazón, mi corazón está con mi, mi familia. Es con mucho dolor que me voy, pero me voy sabiendo que dejamos el departamento en buenas manos, el liderazgo que tenemos ahora, que hemos puesto en esos 13 meses, es un liderazgo que va a mantener el departamento siguiendo adelante junto con la comunidad. Así que la reforma es lo que me encanta, el servicio público es lo que me encanta, pero al fin del día tengo que ser papá más que nada en la vida y tengo que regresar a mi familia. Tenemos un alcalde y los uh, oficiales aquí del, del concilio que nos apoyan mucho y tenemos un manejador que nos apoya mucho y tenemos la verdad, eh, todo está listo para mantener el movimiento uh, para adelante. Ok, thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Chief, can we have another question? Oh, yeah, sure. Time to couple last Hi. Based upon Yeah. If the city decides to expand to a national search to fill your role, do you think the city of Aurora can draw qualified candidates with resumes like yours? Well, let me just say this. I, I think that you're better off with going with who you have and what you know than what you don't have and what you and you don't know. Um, by all accounts, if you look at the last 13 months in the city, we have made tremendous strides, and I have not done that alone. We bought a deputy chief nine months ago that is phenomenal that uh, came here because she got to see in Houston, Texas, and she got to work with me very closely in Houston, Texas, as we reformed, I mean, I, she was my third internal affairs commander, which is that, you know, that job nobody really wants in law enforcement. She helped me reform that. So my recommendation, I think I've already talked to the mayor, and the continuity of leadership is really important. We're on the right trajectory. And I think I, I challenge anybody here to say we're not. We have made great progress. And I would say that um, if you know it's working, if it ain't broken, you don't fix it. But just because we're not broken doesn't mean we can't be better. And you've got people in place. Uh, all the appointed positions are basically new. And uh, they are phenomenal. They're putting in the work. They have the right mindset, the right intellect, but most importantly, they have the right heart. And I would say, the slow our roll. I'm not going to speak for the city manager, but I think that after 13 months of, <laughs> I was either home on a weekend every once in a while, but the last few weekends, I just, the last minute I kept buying a plane ticket to go home, and I, you cannot be a part-time chief. You, you know, when you're a landlord that lives in New York City, what happens to those properties when they're not around? 
they're not the best neighbors. I don't want to be that chief, but I, I think that I think that you need to just see what's going on. It's in uh, good shape, and we'll see. I can just tell you, I, I think you've got all the all, all, you've got everything you need to be su successful. Am I hearing you say the acting chief wants your badge? <laughs> Look, if you take, uh, I don't know what she wants. I will tell you this. I always tell my, the, the best job in the police department is always number two. <laughs> Let's face it. You know, you, 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 you get almost the same pay and everything else, but you don't have the target. I, I think that if Heather, uh, she's going to be given the opportunity, uh, I, I know that she's already moved her family here. If she's successful, uh, you know, uh, go with what you know and not what you might get uh, because sometimes you might regret what you bring later on. So let, the, let time be her, her judge. Sure. So yeah, I think uh, the chief hit it on the head in the sense that uh, Heather uh, represents continuity in terms of our efforts, in terms of our leadership. So that's what we're going to do. So Heather's going to be the interim. Uh, and this came on pretty suddenly over the last, uh, you know, uh, several days. And so we're going to take um, some time. We're going to take a few weeks to kind of um, figure out what's next. So we don't have that answer right now, but I think we are very appreciative of uh, Heather willing to step up, take that interim role. And we're going to take some time to figure out what's next, both for for the, the department, for the city, and, and where to go from next. So we don't have that decision yet. So not embarking on a search immediately? No, we're going to take some time. What makes you think Chief Morris can gain the trust of the force and the confidence of the force? Uh, she's been here. I think that's, again, that's part of what uh, the, the, the chief talked about. She's been here. Um, and so I think she understands the challenges ahead of us and, and I think can hit that ground running in, in, in that interim role. Chief, uh, can you talk a little bit? So obviously family is the biggest driver here, but can you talk about other reasons that How is this doing when I put it on? I, I just got this watch. How do you, how, <laughs> how do you, does this not, okay. I know, oh, yeah, okay, right, okay, all right. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So you, obviously family is your, your biggest reason, yeah. can you talk about other uh, things that contributed to your decision? I think that's it. I mean, look, I, I, I love being a cop. I'm 59 years old, I'm still full of full of, I don't know what, and vinegar. You can uh, pee in vinegar. Um, I almost said it, but I love being a cop. My happy place is with cops, around cops, serving the community. Um, I love being in a, in a police car. I mean, it is truly the most invigorating office you could ever have. The mayor's worked with me. We've been on patrol a couple of times. Uh, it's just, but it's family. I mean, I, I've already been talking to a chief about becoming a reserve officer for now until I see what happens. <laughs> because I can be the cop. Policing, you know what? The American police officer, this generation of American police officers, I would say that our profession is the most scrutinized profession in this country. We're making, they're making split-second decisions under, in very dynamic situations, and their decisions are then... Uh, dissected by, by the millisecond by juries and lawyers and everybody else, you know. But I would say that this generation of the American police officer in 37 years of policing is the best educated, best trained, most scrutinized, and the most professional in the history of American policing. That's a fact. And uh, I think that if you don't believe me, uh, let's go back to the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and pre Rodney King to, and compare the collective work of police officers today to then. So, no, it's just, um, but it's funny because my, my, my boy says, Dad, I know how much you like it. But, <laughs> so he's trying to be strong. It's actually, it's me. I, 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 I don't want any regrets. Spanish, uh, but like you, you said, you feel supported by, by the council here? Oh, absolutely. Uh, this mayor and council have been phenomenal. It's, um, what's, and what's so interesting is that people talk about, because that's the world we live in, right? Everybody wants to talk about and focus on when they disagree uh, in terms of uh, left and right. But I tell you, the so I came here thinking, oh my God, it's gonna be like you know, Monday Night Wrestling every Monday or what? And they had so many more points of agreement in the last 13 months. I saw a mayor and a council um, on both sides of the aisle. They were more focused on problem solving than on trying to get their latest quote to the you know, extreme base because it's a tough time in, our, in, a, in, a, in American history. I mean, you've got, you've got, conser you've got the, the political spectrum used to be moderate, right? Progressive, conservative. Does everybody agree with that? And now it's moderate, progressive, conservative, and batshit crazy on both sides of, of the aisle. 
past that. And you know what? Most Americans are pragmatic people, and I saw a lot of that going on. I saw a lot of thoughtful deliberation and really good public policy. Look, um, they're not throwing away the key, you know, they throw away, lock them up, throw away the key, but they also want to have real consequences to help combat crime. And I think when I said last week we were creating an island of safety, that's part of it. But they're also looking at how we can help uh, with our unhoused uh, community, how we can uh, leverage uh, the public safety, uh, the public uh, entities around here, our partners, our federal level, county, state, our non-governmental agencies. So there's a lot of good things going on here. So uh, that, that, it's just, it's family, man. I mean, if it was up to that little guy, he'd probably, I don't know if he wants me home because I run a tighter ship than mom does, okay? <laughs> I run a tighter ship than mom does. Uh, last time I was home, I was uh, kind of questioning his buddies, which I don't think he appreciated. Uh, yes, sir. ¿Eh? ¿Para ser jefe? Yo creo que sí. Eh, yo quiero ser un, un departamento más. Porque esto es, mire, nosotros éramos refugiados y el servicio público es lo que está en mi corazón. Y si el, un departamento más me gustaría hacer, pero este es un buen tiempo. Look, you're leaving on a high. The, the, the consent decree is on, on good track. It, it really is on, uh, on track. Crime is down. I, I think that the standing of the department and the community as I go out there talking to folks, the reaction I've gotten from uh, some of the community leaders and elected officials at every level of government has been really touched my heart. But you see, they think they're talking about me. What they're actually talking about and reacting to is the collective work of the men and women of the department. They're the, uh, least, least important person is the chief. It's the men and women that make it happen. Yes, sir. Sí. Mira, acuérdate que yo sé que estamos en una época con eh, en este país que hay mucho temor a, la, a, a las autoridades. Acuérdese que en este país y en esta ciudad, el único que tiene que tener temor a la policía es el delincuente. Porque si eres víctima, si eres testigo, aquí no hay que tener temor porque aquí estamos a sus órdenes. Nosotros estamos interesados si estás indocumentado o no. Si eres víctima o eres testigo, adelante. Uh, y ese es el corazón de nosotros. Uh, anything else? Yes, ma'am. Did you consider moving your family here? Yeah, we've discussed that. And uh, actually, we talked about that when I first came here. And we don't have any family here. And um, we have at least, we, at least we have an uncle. In, uh, in Austin, and that's where Jake went to elementary school. If we had family here, we would have moved him. Uh, but, you know, it's just we don't. Uh, I want to miss it. I mean, you know, people asked about, oh, how does it go in from the biggest departments in the country in Austin and Houston and California Air Patrol to the small department? First of all, we're not a small department. We're not a small city. We're a huge, dynamic, complex vibrant uh, city that I don't think people appreciate because Denver's there, but I got news for them about 15, 20, 25 years, Denver's stuck where they're at. This city's gonna continue to grow. And I think we have the right leadership to do the growth in a smart way. A couple more, is I, yes ma'am. Thank you for yes, your service here. Thank you. Oh my God, Lord have mercy. Okay. Yeah, no, I, absolutely not. That's, that's for a deposition involving the Harding Street um, uh, tragedy, and who, by the way, I, I look forward to that deposition because there has been so many, um, there has been so much, uh, you know, you can't really talk about ongoing cases, and especially when we had criminal investigations going. I'm really looking forward to that deposition because if it wasn't for this chief, they might have gotten away with it, and that will come out in deposition. That's all that was, Harding Street chief. deposition. Pressure from the police unions influenced your decision at all, or if you were under pressure from the unions? To no, absolutely not. Look, I look, unions. Uh, I've always said it before. I'll say it again. I am very pro labor. I absolutely support labor. There, there's are those that would think we should get rid of police unions, but the problem is if they don't have rights, we'll go back to the 50s, where police officers, the mayor said, "Hey, go beat that person of color just because they're protesting uh, for rights." I am completely supportive of unions, but unions, they have a role to play. Uh, my door is always open to them. That's my nephew. Um, 
he said, he's, I, I told him to take him to the movie. He's actually uh, wants to see me. Um, absolutely not. I, 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 my door's always been open. The reason that I put a citizens, com uh, a chief's advisory committee together is because sometimes our union leaders will give you what's important to them, but they won't tell you what's important, truly important to the men and women on the streets. And I guarantee you that in my entire career, I've always spent more time with the cops than the union leaders do because ask, ask uh, union leaders, especially ours, Hoff, when's the last time they, they went and Hoff and actually go on patrol in the middle of the night? You know, I've been on patrol, I don't know how many times in the middle of the night, including with the mayor, so. No, that's just, that's, that's the nature of the relationship, but absolutely not. And so would you describe this as your retirement? Or oh God, no. I was raised by a Cuban refugee that said you die with your boots on. My dad almost literally died with his boots on. I, I've got so much energy in me. I, I, there's, but again, I'm a person of uh, faith and I think God will put me where he needs me. And I really believe that I was supposed to go to Miami and expose those people. I was supposed to come here and help us get on track and we'll see what, what's next for me. Okay, a couple more, I'm getting thirsty. I'm feeling like Marco Rubio right now, I'm sorry. Yeah. Building on the other question, Chief, and as a parent, I appreciate what you said about yeah. your son. But candidly, phones have been ringing with pressure about whether you're going to stay or leave. Yeah. Was this 100% your decision or were you getting pressured to either? Oh, <laughs> it's 100% my decision. I know that sometimes people think they're more important and more powerful than they are that they think they are, but no, it's 100% my decision. And I think that, um, quite honestly, <laughs> my wife always says the only time you're happy is when you're in a fight. So uh, people that don't want me here should be glad I'm leaving because I guarantee you this ain't my first rodeo, and I can certainly say it won't be my last rodeo. Anything else? Oh, yeah, don't mop because you guys, I got to go. Dime. Yo creo que, aquí con nuestros oficiales, yo creo que los oficiales le hemos enseñado, porque hay que, como líder, hay que enseñarle, explicarle que ellos no están rotos, que la comunidad no le tiene odio, que la comunidad lo apoyan y que esta orden del consent decree es una tremenda oportunidad y yo creo que le hemos abrir, abierto el cerebro, la mentalidad y la mayoría de los oficiales están... Eh, están, uh, est están completamente en favor de lo que estamos haciendo. And the question was, uh, how does the, what's, what are, what, the, the mindset of the, the officers? I think that when I first got here, um, I really believed that there was a us versus them in terms of the consent decree. There was something bad. And I think in the last 13 months, our officers and our staff have really realized it has been a tremendous blessing for them. And it's been a tremendous opportunity, and they've they've really embraced it. They've seen the fact that we were able to change the hiring process, and all these things that are happening that will make them a better department. Two more, and I'm really done because I got to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Crawford, Hi. I grew up with you as police chief in Houston. Oh, God, yes. So. How was it? How did it go? <laughs> huh? This is one of our constituents. This was not set up because the conspiracy theories will say that you were planted. No, I, I, I absolute full, uh, full support. I, I just, uh, what, just think about this for a minute. We, I think it's clear that if you go back that um, there were some shenanigans in terms of the command staff with uh, some members of council over the last couple of years and uh, those people are no longer on command staff anymore and you didn't hear a peep from council. Uh, and that's because I think we worked very diligently to work together to work uh, collectively, collaboratively. And so, yeah, that, without a doubt, both, without a doubt, every single member of that council have been uh, helpful uh, to what we've accomplished. And I think they're going to continue to be helpful. And all I would ask with them is that uh, continuity is important. Just this new command staff that's in place, we need, we need to support them just like they did me for the last 13 months. So one more and I'm done. Yes, ma'am. I, no, I, oh, well, first of all, they don't speak for the whole force, right? But I think that uh, last week I made a comment about the union that was completely taken out of context um, at, the end of the, at, at the end of my press conference, and in response to that, they're having a meeting. But uh, trust me when I say that I do support uh, labor. I don't support uh, anyone 
that would want to stand in the way of progress, that would want to stand in the way of making our officers better, that would want to stand in the way of bringing best practices, the best equipment, uh, and uh, most importantly, the strongest, forging that, the, the most, the strongest relationship we can with the community. So, um, I, 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 which when they, I think when the officers see what I actually said, they're going to realize that that's a big uh, to do for nothing, uh, because uh, the the comment was really more about what should be our priority, and our priority should be our workforce, their safety, their equipment, their training, our community. And, uh, and that's about it, and that's what I came to work for. So thank you all very much, and if you're ever in Austin, look me up. Thank you.